Hi Oslo users, this is going to be a video that covers modifying and supplementing Oslo, in other words an introduction to uh, programming in Oslo. So for this video I have my copy of Oslo open and I'm just going to go to the help. You can come up here and hit Oslo help or type in F1 or type help in the command line. Here I'm just even going to hit the yellow question mark. There's lots of ways to get to the help. So if I look here uh, at the contents, the contents have a number of different things you can look at. It's the bottom two in this option that we're going to look at. I'm going to start with the bottom one and just mention there is a command reference in here. So if I just click on this, it gives an outline of uh, what's in this help area. If you, you can open it up and look, there's a whole number of uh, different list specifications, argument definitions, and then a, a number of different commands given by uh, different uh, letters. Now, one thing that I should say about Oslo is if you look at this command reference, you say, wow, that's really extensive. Yes, Oslo has a very open uh, architecture, and that makes it really nice and customizable. So everything that I'm talking about in this video allows you to essentially add capability to the program. The, the philosophy behind Oslo has been that uh, there should be no uh, limit to the, the, your ability to make the program flexible, at least within what it can do technically. So it's been built so that people can turn it into what they want if when we ship it to you it's not uh, it's missing some things that you would really like to have or if you're doing some special kinds of work and it would make your life easier to spend a little bit of time uh, customizing it. But it certainly does quite a bit and is very powerful without using these features as well. So the uh, other portion that I want to look at here is programming and here under programming if I open it up you see SCP programming, CCL programming uh, and down here at the bottom dynamic link libraries and DDE so I'll talk about each of these briefly now because this is just an introduction SCP stands for star command programming it is essentially just tying a set of commands together it's limited but it was an early implementation of something to customize Oslo its more powerful successor is uh, the next one down, which is CCL programming. And CCL programming stands for uh, Command Compiled Language, is what CCL actually stands for. And it's more than a macro language, it actually uh, is compiled code. So it runs very, very efficiently and it's very powerful. It uses some C syntax uh, with it and C syntax commands. It's not exactly the same. For example, you can look down further here in the text. It, it, there's a, an area you can go to. It talks about the differences from CCL from C. But it, I have found that it is not uh, particularly difficult to use. I've never taken a, a, a class in C programming and I've always been able to use CCL and do a lot with it. So you don't have to be a great programmer to get a lot of use out of CCL. Certainly if you have programming skills like any of these kinds of computer endeavors that uh, won't hurt you and can even help you. But you don't have to be a great programmer in order to use this. So we'll show, we'll have some other videos on CCL because it really is the workhorse for customizing and modifying and making uh, more powerful routines in Oslo. CCL also um, is something that is used with uh, the database features, the glass database being a common one that you might uh, run across. So um, again, databases, some of them if you make a private database you could do it within the spreadsheets in Oslo, but there are ways to use CCL with it as well. The next few of these are things like how you access data and what the data are including what are global variables in the program. Uh, programming libraries for different kinds of uh, things you might want to do. You can see even a math library, for example, and graphics functions. Uh, User-defined support routines are ones where you would use, um, for example, if I want to make a special user-defined surface or a user-defined uh, SAG surface of some sort, this is uh, something to help you actually do that. So the accessing data programming libraries and user support routines, these essentially supplement CCL and supplement DLL uh, type of capability. So again, the only two programming languages I've talked about or programming options are SCP and CCL so far. The last two are dynamic link libraries. Now this is in Oslo Premium only, but 
uh, dynamic link libraries actually allow you to write C code and then link it in to Oslo. So you have to have an external compiler and there are some other things you have to do. You would do this and use this feature if you have something where it's going to be called a lot and you want it to run a lot faster. So I have uh, done these types of programs where I put something into the Oslo uh, figure of merit, the merit function, uh, and I want to run uh, the optimizer and so the optimizer calls this routine repeated times and I want it to run faster that's one example there was other cases where we were tracing a lot of rays through a system because we had some high frequency data we wanted to uh, assess on a surface so we needed a lot of rays going through and every time a ray would hit this user defined surface it would need to call the routine so we just wanted it to run faster the last option is the dynamic data exchange. This is essentially an old Windows protocol and it allows you to uh, share information between different programs. So it also is advanced. I have never actually used this. I've never programmed with this. I had one project where uh, one of the other engineers had written uh, code to uh, go between um, MATLAB and Oslo and going between the two programs uh, was enabled by this dynamic data exchange. So you would use this if you're doing something so often that you really want to either call it from another program like MATLAB or Excel, or you would use it if you want to uh, someone, uh, you want someone to use it, they don't, you don't want them to necessarily need to know a lot of Oslo, but they're doing some analysis where they're using the ray trace engine. So they have a copy of Oslo on their machine and you run some analysis uh, code from another program. So it's useful for things that you're going to do a lot and if it becomes essentially like another program that you're going to utilize. So to summarize, CCL is really the one pro uh, programming language, uh, programming option within Oslo that is the real workhorse. It's the one that's used uh, for many, many things, but you'll find if you start uh, writing some of these routines and using some of these options that it expands greatly the uh, program functionality and uh, capabilities of Oslo. Thanks so much.